Good morning, everybody. You are currently listening to A Tall Girl's podcast, hosted by a tall girl named India. I hope everyone listening to this is doing super fantastic today. Before I get into this episode, I do want to say make sure you are following me on my socials at A Tall Girl's podcast. Ooh, the syllables <laughs> on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest so that you can stay updated on all the latest podcast episodes and check out some super relatable, super hilarious tall girl content. In fact, it's a requirement if you want to keep listening to this podcast episode. So <laughs> I'm kidding. Why does that sound more intense and more serious than I imagined that it would sound? It's not that. I mean, it's deep. It's deep, but it's not that deep. Like, how are you going to listen to this episode without following me? Anyways, <laughs> the link for that is going to be in the description above, below, sideways, horizontally. What? horizontally vertically diagonally i don't know what's going on but wherever your description is the link will be there for my socials and underneath that link you will see a link to leave me a review make sure you do that and let me know how tall you are i'm genuinely curious leave me a review and let me know how tall you are but little life well not even life school life well school is part of my life now whatever life ish update ish For me, midterm season has officially come to a close. I took my last midterm this past week. It's insane. I honestly don't even know how I got to this point, but you know, you'd think it would just be a sigh of relief, a big burden off my shoulders. Partially it is because I don't have to spend one third of the day studying anymore. So that's, that's a vibe. I can mess with that. But in the whole midterm time period, literally I only had two midterm exams too, so it's crazy. But I was doing a lot of studying and I was pushing other assignments back. So how my schedule works this semester is that I have two classes that have like exams and then two classes that more so just have projects, like there's no exams or anything. So I, I personally think that these professors kind of calculate it like, hmm, like when midterm season is around, let's just increase the workload during that time period. So I'm trying to study and I'm seeing all these assignments and I'm like, I can't do that right now because I need to study for this exam. It's like a chunk of my grade and I, I need to do really well so I could get my GPA back up to what it was before. So I was pushing these projects back and now that midterms is over, I'm looking and I'm like, wow, like I have a project due in three days. I have a project due in one day. How am I gonna make this work? So the stress is still kind of there. And then on top of that, if you didn't know, I'm applying for study abroad to study abroad over the summer. Woohoo, so exciting. But filling out these applications are just not the vibe, dude. Not the vibe. And then on top of that, one application fee is $400. $400. Can you believe that? I did $400 just to apply to a program, not even to save my spot. Good night. But nonetheless, midterms is at least over. And I am halfway through this semester. It's insane, dude. And this whole midterm season time period is kind of what inspired this episode because if you're in college now or you went to college at some point in time, midterm season is just, it's just not the vibe, okay? It feels like your life is crashing and burning. You're spiraling every three seconds. You're breaking down. You're forgetting stuff. It's just horrendous. But hey, we're still standing. I mean, I'm sitting right now, but I'm still alive. We're still alive. We're still pushing through. And that's great. And happy spring, y'all. What? Well, I mean, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, happy spring. Look at me dropping some mathematics or it's not math, it's science. There's a geography. See, see, see what midterms did to my mind. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but I know it's a weird left turn from what I was literally just saying, but by the time this episode is up, the first day of spring will have passed. What day is today? Today's Sunday and I'm recording this and I think the first day of spring is like Monday or Tuesday. Either one of those days, but 
it will have passed by the time this is up so happy spring and with changing seasons comes changing moods oddly enough and you know you usually think that you'd be happy happier especially the spring because you know the days are getting longer the weather is getting warmer and yada 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 but like if you're going a little insane i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> Did I really just say that? No, but seriously, some of y'all really be hysterical. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I, it's not a bad thing. And if I made it seem like it was a bad thing, if I came across like I was judging you because you're actually losing your mind, like I apologize because I'm losing my mind too. We're in the same insanity boats. But seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if you feel out of the ordinary not yourself stuff like that and that is completely fine let this episode be a reminder that it's okay to feel off sometimes it's okay to feel bad sometimes it's okay to feel mad sometimes it's okay to feel sad sometimes look at me with bars how am i not a poet rhyming but it's okay to feel how you feel it's even okay to cry oh my gosh i have something embarrassing to say well it's no longer embarrassing to me like i will openly just tell other people about it but you may feel embarrassed for me but um so my school has 13 floors and virtually no one is on the 13th floor. Barely any classes take place in the 13th floor. The classes that you probably barely hear of in that particular school occur on the 13th floor. And that's not to say that those classes are irrelevant or the 13th floor is irrelevant. I, don't, I just don't understand why they stuck it up on the 13th floor. But then again, it's probably like less people have to go up there. And since it's so many stairs, well, we do have an elevator, but still, since it's so high up, you know, they put the more, more popular classes. Yeah, more popular classes on the lower floors. So it's easier for people to get to. But nonetheless, the school has 13 floors. And at a certain time of the day, virtually nobody is up there. Like, it's empty. It can get a little creepy sometimes, especially at night. But that's besides the point. At a certain time, nobody is really there. And last semester, and even at the beginning of this semester, I used to go up there and ugly cry. Yeah, ugly cry. Full on red face wheezing bloodshot eyes mad tears everything the whole spiel all while my mom was on the phone <laughs> all while my mom was on the phone dude and people okay well rarely very very rarely would walk back and forth too sometimes because it would be professors or other people who had like a late class up there or was I don't know, had office hours with the professor, but there were those very rare times that people would actually walk past me. And I'm sure they were thinking like, what the heck is this girl on? And I get so mad at myself for it, so mad, because what if my soulmate walked right past me? Ugly crying, that's their first impression of me. <laughs> Ugly crying, looking like life is just not going well for me I'm barazing. terrible <laughs> oh I can't I don't even want to think about that but y'all know how hard it was last well if you've been here for a while if you've been here since last honestly if you've been here for the past two years two or three years you would know how the start of college and the start of actually going to campus physically was for me this past semester and a quarter though was pretty intense i was just not having it and you know i did not want to stop myself from feeling those feelings but in the process i get angry at myself for feeling those feelings and then crying about it on the 13th floor you see you see where i'm going does that does that make a little bit of sense to you because i it's unhealthy to hold in your emotions 
and I could tell after a while I was doing a lot of that I was holding back the tears and I was holding back the rage and I could see how that was literally affecting my daily life I was forgetting stuff a lot a lot I didn't know suppressing emotions could like make you forget stuff I would get cranky there'd be days that nothing bad happened but I just feel like trash it was not the vibe it'll even affect my appetite dude like it's a whole I, it's science I'm a business major I can't explain it to you but holding back your emotions suppressing your emotions it's just not a good thing so I just wanted to let everything out and in the process of letting everything out I was also letting my current emotions and my past emotions out hence why I was ugly crying you see what I mean and then I would get mad at myself for ugly crying because like why am I ugly crying if I'm gonna cry at least let me cute cry <laughs> um I don't even think there's a way to cute cry is there a way to cute cry? I mean, probably how them actors be doing on TV, but it's like just one random tear coming down their eye. It's not prolonged or anything. Like I would sit up on the 13th floor for half an hour to 40 minutes, just bawling, dude. So, but I would actually get angry at myself for that. But you know, I'm only human. We're only human. And I and we just need to give ourselves that space to breathe and not put that unnecessary pressure on ourselves to always be happy, to always get, I don't know, hundreds on exams during midterms or to always be productive, to always, I don't know, go hard at the gym, lift heavy at the gym, run fast at the gym, or to always be strong, to be that strong friend, that strong family member, that pressure and that really high expectation just causes resentment. I would know that caused a lot of resentment with myself. I genuinely resented myself because I was like, oh my gosh, you're an emotional wreck. You're stupid. You're this and you're that. I would literally say that to myself for crying about something, for crying about having a hard time socializing at school, or for crying because school is hard, or crying because it's too much work doing school and work, or just uh, just crying in general. And especially when you don't reach that expectation, or you feel like you put so much pressure on yourself, but you couldn't succeed or do what you wanted to do, that's when that lingering disappointment and a hint of disgust come up. Or let's just say you actually reach your goal, but then you're just like, okay, on to the next one. No pat on the back. No congratulations. I don't know. I don't know. But I just think that constantly telling yourself that you have to do this, or you have to be perfect, or you're not supposed to cry on the 13th floor or you're not supposed to have feelings or anything of that sort. It's just creating an unhealthy relationship with yourself, especially beating yourself up over the things that you have very little to no control of. Oh my gosh, y'all already know I have to relate this to being tall because this is a podcast about being tall. And I know what some of y'all are thinking right now. You cannot control how tall you are. So unless you have the money and the doctor with the qualifications to surgically make you shorter, I don't think it's really worth complaining about all the time. It really isn't. And hey, is yelling at your legs going to make you any shorter? Let's fix the facts right now. Let's let's fix. I'm in management right now. Evidence-based management facing the hard facts. Look at that. Connections. Connections. Imagine we get that question wrong on the exam, but that's not the point. We're making connections right now. Evidence-based management facing the facts is yelling at yourself for feeling bad or failing that exam or not being quote unquote productive 24 seven, 365 and occasionally 366 or wanting to cry or anything. Is yelling at yourself for that gonna make you feel any better? No. So I need you to take a step back Take a deep breath 
and understand that you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You are doing amazing. Everything is going to work out in your favor. So stop being so hard on yourself. It's not doing any favors for anyone, especially yourself. Because, you know, like I said, that growing resentment. That was a little intense. But all in all, being hard on yourself and then feeling like you're failing yourself when in reality you're not. But feeling like you're failing yourself is eventually going to cause you to get angry at yourself. And it's going to build resentment towards yourself. And then that's just an unhealthy, that's just an unhealthy relationship with yourself. That's all. The self-love, the self-acceptance, the self-growth, practically non-existent at that point. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't put some type of pressure on yourself. You should push yourself to be the best person that you can be. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone so you can grow as a human being in any aspect of your life. But when you're doing the most... When you're not giving yourself that break, that pat on the back, that leeway to screw up because yes, we screw up. Give yourself room for mistakes. When you're not doing that, that's when it that's when it gets bad. So I'm gonna need you to chill out with that, okay? <laughs> and if you are feeling bad about tall, I know this is super random, but since I brought it up towards the end of this podcast if you're feeling bad about being tall just know that you are closer to the sun so it's easier for you to photosynthesize what i you know what i don't even know what's going on but if it's because it's spring and the sun's out more so it works go outside this is your reminder if it's sunny outside and you've been inside all day like i have been these past couple of days mainly because of midterms and projects and assignments and yada 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 and work if you've been inside cooped up in the house all day just take a break and go outside for a walk and photosynthesize in the sun i actually did a poll (laughs) i did a poll of that on my instagram because what was i doing i think i was grocery shopping i was grocery shopping and it was so nice i'm talking like 55 degree weather i was outside in a hoodie only a hoodie remember the last time i was outside in a hoodie? me neither i was always i'm always in layers because it's always cold outside but it was 55 degrees i was only in a hoodie didn't have a hat on and i was like is this what it feels like to photosynthesize like i was all up in the sun the sun was out because it's been cloudy for the past couple of weeks the sun was out. i was like yes Feeling the warmth on my face and my hands. It just felt really good. I felt really good. So I did a poll on my Instagram. And I was like, yeah, you know, being tall really does have its perks. One of them being that you're closer to the sun. And I asked them, like, for all the tall people out there. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. All the tall people out there. I don't even think all the tall people in the world are following me. But it is what it is. But for the tall people that are looking at this right now, I guess. Are you glad that you're closer to the sun? And a hundred percent, well, not like a hundred percent of my followers, but every single person I voted, I don't know, that I saw, I was it was less than 24 hours. I didn't like look at it towards the end of the 24 hours. I looked at it like, I don't know, 12 hours later, I guess you could say. When I looked at it, like all 20 people that voted so far said yes. And I was like, ooh, a hundred percent, yes every day that was actually the choice i said every damn day every damn day they're excited to be closer to the sun and i'm i'm glad that i have this community of tall women who are excited to at least be closer to the sun and photosynthesize i need to stop saying that we're humans we're not plants we don't photosynthesize i don't know how they explain how humans use vitamin d from the sun and yada yada it just sounds like photosynthesis so it's just easier to say that maybe there's a different term for that if there is a different term for that let me know hit me up at a tall girls podcast on instagram tiktok and pictures let me know if there's another term or a human term a human version of photosynthesizing that would be interesting to know um you could also let me know when you thought of this episode did it help you through a hard time? Were you having a hard time and now you feel slightly better? Did it make you feel worse? Even if it made you feel worse, let me know if it made you feel worse. Let me know what you think of this podcast. Just let me know. Let me know in general. 
because I like it when you guys hit me up and I see DMs and you just like randomly update me with your life. And I'm like, that was out of the blue, but I'm here for it. Um, the link for socials will be linked below. Well, linked in the description. I don't know where the description is for you guys. Is it above? Is it below? Is it sideways? Horizontally? Diagonally? I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> Let me stop saying that. Um, and underneath that link, you'll see a link to leave me a review. Make sure you leave me a review. Let me know how tall you are because I'm genuinely curious. And with that, thank you so, so much for listening to this episode, listening all the way to the end. Um, I really do appreciate it. And I really do appreciate you. And any last reminders, you are doing the best you can. And that is more than enough. You are doing great and keep pushing because I do believe in you. And I have faith in you that you're going to succeed at whatever it is that you want to do. So I'm going to end the episode here. Have a great rest of your day, week, month, year, and life. And I'll catch you in the next one. Good night and goodbye.